G'day everyone and welcome to our Teams for Remote Learning uh, webinar. My name is Troy Waller. I am a Microsoft Learning Delivery Specialist from uh, Victoria. Um, this series of webinars that we're running here are partnered with the Department of Education and Training Victoria. Um, so it's definitely aimed at um, department teachers. Um, but if you're not a Victorian department teacher, there's still going to be a lot in this for you as well. So welcome to you as well. On the call I have, or on this webinar, I have um, Stephen Payne, who is uh, my colleague and my equivalent in Western Australia. So I'll let you say hi, Steve. Well, hello, Troy, and hello to all my Victorian teacher friends. Excellent. So um, looking at our numbers there, we've got about 132 people on the call today uh, so far, which is really, really good. Um, I'm going to take you through some good stuff today. Um, I just want to let you know that this is the first in a number of webinars that we're running. So this is sort of an overview uh, more about Teams. Um, in a moment, I'll take you in and show you what some of these other uh, webinars are, but I'm going to touch on a lot of things today in a sort of a, you know, a higher, higher level, um, you know, bird's eye view kind of perspective. But from there, um, in the next few webinars, we're going to focus, we'll, we'll drill down and focus more on those different sort of areas, etc. All right. So today, we're going to look at um, Microsoft 365 and Teams. Um, we're going to do a bit of a Teams overview. We're going to help you set up your class team. We're going to help you with an approach to effective online meetings and how to use Teams to better reach your students through face-to-face -face online meetings. And then we're going to share some resources to help you get started. This link here, aka.ms forward slash Microsoft Remote Learning, aka.ms forward slash Microsoft Remote Learning. This is our one stop shop for Microsoft Education Australia around remote learning and all the things that, we, that we're offering and the support that we're offering. It is um, a web page that is full of links for you to get in and, um, and dive into. So keep that in mind. All right, so the first thing that we talk about is Microsoft 365. And yes, this is a Teams uh, webinar and we're going to do a much more of a deep dive into Teams, but I just want to make sure that you understand um, where to access Teams and where to access you know, the whole of Microsoft 365 and especially the Office apps. So that website there, www.office.com, www.office.com. So please um, note that one down because that's going to be your starting point. And when you do come in, you'll come to a page something like this um, and you will um, be able to access Teams and a lot of other apps through that portal. Now, when you are signing in, it's really important to note that it's different for different teachers from around um, around the, the planet and around Victoria especially. But for Victorian teachers, you need to use your TO number at education.vic.gov.au. And I do want to stress um, that you're not supposed to write your TO hash, it's your TO number. So Victorian teachers, you know you have a TO number 09 whatever or 08 whatever, depending on when you join the department. So it's that TO number at education.vic.gov.au. So when you go to office.com, it will ask you for a sign in and that's the email address you use. So we're not using EduMail, we're using this. All right, and then it's your normal EduPass password and you'll be able to jump in. Now, if you're from uh, another school, um, government, sorry, another state government school, or maybe you're from a um, independent school or a Catholic school, it's probably 99% it's going to be just your normal email address and your normal email password. All right, and that's how you log in to office.com. So let's have a little bit of a look here at um, what Teams is all about. So we see here Teams actually contains a lot of, not all of, but a lot of the building blocks for remote learning. So you can see up here at the top of this slide here, we've got course materials and management. So Teams and OneNote um, and even a little bit of SharePoint are really good for holding your, um, your course materials and being able to, to manage those and, and, and you know, reach students with those. Um, in terms of video content, and I want to stress we're over here, we're looking at, um, you can use Stream, which is an Office 365 app. You can also use Teams. And then we skip over here and we see that lessons, streaming and recording also happens through Teams and um, through Microsoft Stream. In terms of assessments, 
Uh, definitely, we use uh, Microsoft Forms, which is an amazing uh, assessment tool. This in itself will be an entire webinar, so keep an eye out for, for the assessment webinar, but definitely there's great tools around um, all of Office 365 Teams as well. The other thing close to my heart, and we will have another workshop around this, is inclusive learning or another webinar around this, inclusive learning. So we have things like the Immersive Reader, Office Lens, and other tools that exist in Office 365 for helping you make sure that your online and remote learning is inclusive. In terms of assignments, again, assignments and assessments, um, very similar, and you, I want you to, again to keep an eye out for that webinar that's coming up, but uh, there's some really good assignment features in Teams, which we'll look at today, but some other good stuff in uh, OneNote as well. And then, of course, remembering that we're on the Office 365 platform, we're on the Microsoft platform, so in terms of organising ourselves, we can do a lot through Teams, but also we can be using Outlook. There's some great analytics as well built into Teams. We'll have a little bit of a look at that today. Um, for those of you that are feeling uh, amazingly uh, techy, you can go in and start using something like Power BI. Um, and we also have My Analytics, which is built into Office 365 as well. So that's the starting point for us today. So let's start to dig a little bit deeper. So we look at Office 365 um, and Teams as a hub. Everything is connected. Um, so we have our calls and our ability to chat and also our ability to um, house everything inside an actual team. So you can have uh, video chats, voice chats, um, of course, good old fashioned text chats through the keyboard. Um, and then also you can house everything in your team, meaning you can put all your resources and everything in the one space. The other thing that we've got is again Office 365 because we're on that platform, right? So everything in Office 365 can come inside of Teams. So some of our favorite, you know, Word and PowerPoint, Excel, OneNote, etc., can all live inside there as well. Um, we've also got third-party apps. So you can see you've got everybody's favorite video streaming service. You've got YouTubers in there. You've got Wakelet. You've got Flipgrid. Um, whole heap of uh, Kahoot, a whole heap of third party apps that you can bring in to this hub. So everything sits inside Teams. So we're not having to pop out to, to visit these, these apps. They're all sitting inside of Teams. And then lastly is assignments, right? So the ability to, um, to connect to OneNote and to set assignments and Flipgrid and that kind of stuff. It's very, very cool. All right. So when we talk about creating collaborative classrooms, the first thing I want to point out to you is that we're going to help you stay organized. So you've got OneNote class notebook um, in, inside of your team, which we'll have a look at in a moment. And that that's built into every class to allow teachers to organize their interactive lessons, deliver personalized learning right from inside teams. Um, we want to empower student voice with rich conversations. We've got video and, and, and other content in there. And so that rich, persistent conversation experience in Teams makes learning more visible to the entire class. So you've got text, video and voice using integrations with things like stream, etc. Um, you can easily create and share content with the embedded Office 365 apps and files. So you can change things like your class avatars, you've got emojis and stickers that allow teachers to harness the natural behaviors of a fun and fluid learning experience, right? So we wanna bring the best of that social media style collaboration and um, communication into, into our uh, online learning. The apps integrate into the classroom experience so teachers can quickly access all the Office 365 apps they already know and use, like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and, and Planner. So for department teachers, this is entirely free. Um, for In fact, for all schools, it's entirely free, but I just want you to know for Victorian department teachers, it is totally set up and ready for you to access. There's nothing that you need to do. Um, so it's free and it provides consistent experiences across your different devices. So if you're on a desktop machine, whether you're on a Windows device or whether you're on a um, an Apple device, I'll just see if I can get rid of that little thing there for us. Um, um, whether you're on a Windows device or whether you're on an Apple device uh, as, as a PC or a Mac, then you're able to um, access Teams as a dedicated client there for you. Um, the other thing that we've got is for tablets and phones. So whether you're on a, uh, an Android tablet or an iOS tablet device, there are dedicated apps for that. 
um, both for the phone and also for your iPad. And then of course, there's a browser. So if you've got a machine with a browser, chances are you're gonna be able to use Teams and we do um, strongly suggest that you use Edge, Chrome or Safari. And I know that it works quite well on Firefox as well. So right across the different devices, right across different platforms. And you are gonna get a bit of a different experience, whether you're using the client or whether you're use, uh, on, on a PC or whether you're using a client on a tablet or a phone or on the browser. The best experience you're going to get is on, a, um, is on a Windows device, on a desktop Windows device, but please know you're gonna get a great experience everywhere else as well. And uh, there's the download link for you there, by the way, aka.ms forward slash get teams. But I'm also going to show you how to access that through your Office 365 tenant in a moment as well. So using Microsoft Teams is an approach to effective remote learning. So Teams supports your lessons by bringing everything the class needs for meeting into one place. It delivers a unique end-to-end -end experience that brings the human element of face-to-face -face interaction while helping students stay focused before, during, and after the lesson. So let's have a look at what we do before the lesson. So in this webinar, we're going to jump in and look at what we do before. All right, so to ensure the lesson is productive, students can prepare ahead of time by reviewing previous content and engagements and collaborating on documents. And you as a teacher, you're going to make sure that you create the class team, you're going to schedule your online class or lecture, and you're going to prepare your own device. Um, during, so once the lesson begins, teachers can use a variety of features that help focus attention, drive engagement, foster inclusion, such as this, you know, high fidelity audio and video, live captions, translations, um, co-authoring of apps, digital whiteboard, uh, and distraction-free backgrounds, so we're able to actually um, blur our background. So during this um, during this class meeting, we're going to present our content for students. We're going to allow um, ourselves to record the lesson for later viewing, so students can who missed it can access it, but also students who want to use it as a um, a review resource. And we can also manage the conversations and questions. Then afterwards, um, all the content, including the the video recording, the chat, the notes, the whiteboard and, and all the files, they're saved in a persistent conversation, right? This conversation keeps going even after the video lesson has stopped and that helps the class continue the discussion and nothing gets lost in the crack. So afterwards, we can access the lesson recordings, whether that's us or the students. We can view responses to conversations in the chat and we can continue that chat and collaborate on documents and learning materials. OK, so Beforehand, as I said, we're going to create a class team, we're going to schedule our online class or lecture, and we're going to prepare our device. So um, I might just jump in and say and ask um, if there's been any questions, Stephen, that you wanted to throw up. There's been any questions so far? Yeah, there's been quite a few. I've been answering them um, privately, specific ones, and I've posted a few um, public ones. Uh, just uh, can you clarify whether you'll share the slides and the recording at the end? Yes, the recording will definitely be um, available and I'll make sure that I make the slides available to you as well. Thanks, Troy. Cool. All right. So when we create a, um, a class team, a team can support up to 5,000 members. OK, so I know most of you as as Victorian teachers will not be having classes of 5,000 people, um, but nevertheless, that's how big these teams can be. So when we create a class team, students can't leave the team. Um, so when we when, when they join the team, they're, they're stuck and they're a part of that team. It's invite only and it's hidden from others. So no one can stumble across your team. Um, and then also class materials folder is read only. So we have a space where we can upload our class materials that the students can copy um, and they can access, but they can't delete them and they can't change them, which is really, really good. The other thing to note is that whilst the team can hold up to 5,000 members, when we're having a video chat um, or we're, um, excuse me, when we're having uh, assignments or the OneNote class notebook, at the moment that's only a maximum of 200 students, which is still huge, um, but that's going to increase in the future. And the video chat can hold up to about 250 at a time. So for most of us, that's all, that's all we're ever going to need. So we need to add students to our class and I'm going to give you a demo of this in a moment. I'm going to go in and take you through all this, but I just want to sort of spell out what it is that we're going to do. So you create a team. 
to bring your students together into this one space. All right. So um, through a self-managed way, you can um, you can create an invite link. All right, and share that out. You can also create a join code so you could email the join code to the students or you can also add um, a distribution group. Um, for those of you that are outside the Victorian department, there is um, ways using um, your IT department to automate the setting up of a um, of a class team using a thing called School Data Sync. But for now in Victoria, we've really only got that self managed aspect that we can use. All right, so look at a team. So this slide here I'm going to make available to you, as I said. Um, so a lot of these slides are more for you to use as reference than sort of talk through now. But this is what a team looks like. Um, you can see there that I've got um, the ability to um, I've got sorry, what's called my activity feed um, where I can see anything that's related to me. Um, I go in there much like the notifications in Facebook or Twitter or something like that. Um, I've got the ability to chat. Um, I can um, start new chats from here. I've got a command box so we could learn some commands to be able to search through things in Teams. Um, I can manage my profile over here, which we're, we're going to get in and have a look at all this as well. Um, we can create Teams, manage Teams, etc. All right. So again, this is more for you as a as a reference to go back to later. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take you in and I'm going to create a team. All right. So I'm going to jump over into into this. And this is our Office 365 start page. So remember we came to office.com. It asked me to, it will ask me to sign in. I sign in using my um, department credential, which is my TO at education.vic.gov.au. Um, or if you're from a, another, another department or another school, you just use your email address and password. All right. And then what I can do is I can click on Teams from here. Okay. So that's the that's the web app. So that's the browser app that I can use and I can access it through there. Now I'm going to have to demo to you through the browser app today because at the moment I'm using the, the full app to deliver this um, this live event. All right. So I'm, forgive me, I'm just going to have to take you through that today. Okay. So um, if I was to click on this, what it would do is it would open Teams. And you can see here I've got um, I'm in tile view, so I have a list of my of my teams that are available to me to access. Um, what I'm going to do first, this is where we're going to go and play today, one that I've built earlier. But instead, I'm going to take you through first. I'm going to show you how we, we create a team because that's possibly what you're going to want to do with your kids when you all go back to work in a couple of weeks time. So when I click on join or create a team, you can see here if I was joining a team um, and I had a team code, I could pop that code in there and I could access that. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a team because we're coming at this as a teacher. So there are four different teams. OK, I will give you some links to explore what the different teams are. OK, um, but what we're going to do today is really jump into a class team and have a bit of a play around with that, because that's really what we want to be looking at in terms of our remote learning and remote access for our students. So if I was to create a team, um, I have to think about naming conventions. I don't want to just call it Mr. Wallace class or, you know, or 6G or something like that, because what am I going to call it next year if I continue to use this in, in, in another context? So what I tend to do is I tend to give it a year name, then I tend to give it the school code. Um, you don't have to do it this way, but maybe you, your school is 2567 or whatever it's called. And then I would actually put in my, I'm going to call this, actually, I'm going to call this 4H. OK, um, that's just random, but that might be the name of my of my class. And then I can create this team from an existing team if I've already got one or I can create it brand new. Let's go in brand new. And let that fire away. Now, the next thing we get to do is we get to add people so we can add people as students. Right, which means they're going to have limited access to what they can do through the team or we can add them as teachers. OK, my advice to you is don't add the students at this stage, because if you add them at this stage, they're going to get an email invitation to a team that's not quite finished. All right, so we can certainly add our students later on. But nevertheless, I just want to show you that this actually finds my students for me. All right, so if I was looking for someone like I'm looking for a student called Megan. There she is. I can click on her there and then I can add her directly to the team. All right. OK, now when we come in to our team, um, we we had I mean, gosh, there's just so much to take you through, but I think I'm going to start with just the beginning of changing our icon. All right, so this is just changing the avatar. 
Um, you can see that we're in an education tenant, so we get some really cool education graphics that we're going to use. Um, I'm just going to put this as a book. OK, um, and then that's when I start to build out my team. All right. Now, as I said to you, I built one earlier, which is going to be a little bit easier. So I'm going to jump into here. 2026 G. This is the one that I I pre built and you can see there's already a lot going on inside here. So first thing I want to draw your attention to is this this up here, the activity tab. OK, so this activity tab is um, if it has a little red dot, then it's telling me that there are notifications that are waiting for me. And as I said to you before, just like Facebook, just like Twitter, just like um, Instagram, it's bringing that sort of social media way that we collaborate into a, a classroom. Right. So if I was to click on that, any um, anything that was new would be in bold, but these are all the different uh, notifications that are relevant somehow to me right across my team's experience, not just for this team. Um, I've got the ability to chat. So just like in, in social media, I've got my direct messaging, my private messaging. Um, so that's happening away from what everyone else can see. Um, I can look again at my teams list. OK, so I could jump back into all my teams or come into this team here. Um, assignments. This shows me all my assignments across my different teams, whether I'm a teacher or a student. We'll have a look at that a little bit later. I've got my calendar here. My calendar um, is going to, it's been going to be connected to um, uh, perhaps to my Outlook experience. And then I've also got the ability to make calls, etc. But what I'm going to do for us now is I'm going to take us into this team and I want to show you some of the things that you can do inside this space. The first thing that we see across the top here is we've got posts. OK, so this is our conversation and this is where we get to communicate with one another. So down at the bottom here, you can see I can start a new conversation or I can reply to an existing conversation. All right. So if I was to come in here and say hi, everyone. All right, that's going to be added into that conversation there. Now the conversation is transparent, it means that everybody that's a member of that team can access that conversation and see that conversation. The other thing, because it's such a big space, if I want to draw someone's attention, I might at mention someone, in this case, Stephen. All right, so I start, um, I hit the at and then hit him. And then I say, hi mate, how's your day? All right, and now what will happen is Stephen will actually get an activity notification up here because this is drawing his attention to that. All right, so the other thing that's cool about this is we can attach files, we can play around with our emojis, we can play with our animated giphys, which is a lot of fun, um, and we can throw in stickers and we can um, customize and personalize those stickers as well, and we can even start a video chat right here, right now, but we'll come back to that a little bit later. Um, the other thing that's really cool is throwing in announcements as well. So if I was to start uh, a conversation here, um, I can turn that into an announcement and everyone will get a notification, right? And I can do something really cool like choose a, a nice illustration. So let's say I'm going to use the dragon and I might say uh, Teams webinar happening now. All right, and then I could put in a a subheading, check it out, and then I can put in a, a notice. And then when I click this, everyone's going to get an a notification up here. Okay, um, and it's also oh look, Steve's down here. Sorry, he was doing trombone practice. Welcome back. Um, and then uh, now everyone's going to get a notification about that, and it's just a nice way to draw everyone's attention to that. Okay, the other thing too is. Um, We've also got our file space. So as I said before, we've got our, our class material space, which is created. I as a teacher um, have full access to that. Um, I can put stuff in, remove stuff, change things, um, all happening inside here. Um, I can create brand new Word documents, Excel documents, PowerPoint presentations, OneNote notebooks, forms, etc. all can happen in the online version inside Teams as well. And I want to invite you back to um, our uh, upcoming webinar on Office 365 and Teams. Um, you can jump in and I'll tell you all about the cool things you can do in that space. But this is basically our, our um, class files storage area. The other thing that we've got in here 
is a class notebook. And again, there will be another workshop where we will take you deeply into using class notebook and using OneNote um, and, and also both inside and outside of Teams, right? So whether you're using Teams or not, that's another webinar I do recommend that you jump in and have a look at. Um, so the class notebook, if you don't know about class notebook, um, you're in for a treat um, when you come along to that webinar because it's just it's an amazing space for for learning and it's a brilliant tool for remote learning as well. Um, so what happens when you create a class notebook is that you get a collaboration space. Collaboration space, as the name indicates, is a space for everyone in the class to to um, to collaborate together to read and write. Um, and I can set permissions for that as well. We've also got a content library and the content library is read only for the students. Um, it's kind of like that file storage area, except instead of storing files, now I'm storing um, documents and content like that. So students can only um, act, read, um, they can copy, but they can't make any changes. So that's where I'd put on my learning. And then you can see here, I've got my students. So I've got Amanda, Dan, Megan, and Stephen. So if I go into Stephen's area, you can see Stephen has a science and a literacy, a Chinese and a maths um, section. Um, so inside those, uh, inside that area, that's his area that he has full uh, read and write access, but I as a teacher have read and write access too. But the kids don't see each other. So Stephen would just see a collaboration space, a content library and himself. But I as a teacher get to move in and um, see everything that's going on in that space. Now, the other thing over here is we've got these channels. Now, I showed you a moment ago where, well, sorry, I should say we are now in the general channel, okay? Um, and the general channel is interesting because that's where we have our, our notebook and our assignments. But some of these other channels, which I've created, you can see they really, they have uh, the conversation, so the posts and the files, they have a link back to the OneNote space, um, but that's that's all they have in, in that space there. Um, so I've got one of these for each of the different uh, subjects that my grade six students are doing. And it's really easy to create a channel. I just click add channel. Let's create a science channel. And I have a choice here. I could create a standard channel that everyone can see, or I could have a private channel and set permissions and lock people in and out of that channel. Um, but in this case, this is a channel for the whole group. And you can see there that um, when I create that channel. Now it has its own area for, for posts, right? For discussions about science and for uh, storing the files. And it also creates a link back to that OneNote space. What I wanna show you though, is I'm gonna come into this Chinese space here and I'm going to click on add a tab. Now when I do that, it brings up all these different apps, right? So these are the ones that are native to, um, to Teams, all right? So these are my, uh, Office 365 apps, so I could I could put in a tab for one of those, um, and I've also got all these third party apps as well, right? So these are apps that are some of them are subscription based, some of them are free services, but you can bring all these in as well. So the cool thing about this is we're not having to go outside of Teams to access everything that we want to access. It all happens inside of Teams. Okay. Now in this case, what I want to do is I want to inside my Chinese one, I want to actually create a link to a video. All right, so in that case, I'm not going to create it as a website, I'm going to create it as a YouTube clip. Okay, and then you can see I've got a link up here for a YouTube clip, so I'm going to grab that. I'm going to come back into Teams, throw in my YouTube clip. No, excuse me. That's okay, I'm gonna, in this case, I'm gonna look for BBC Chinese Learning, and I'm gonna search, and that's the one, let's let's pretend that this is the one that I'm looking for, and then I'm going to save that in. So what happens now is that that YouTube clip will now exist as a tab across the top and can actually be played from inside Teams. All right, now the other thing that I might wanna do is down here in literacy, I might wanna draw some students' attention to um, an adjective uh, website that I've got for them because we may be working on adjectives. So what I do is I jump in here, I'm gonna click on plus to add a tab and this time it's a website and I'm gonna say it's an uh, ad adjectives activities, that's the one. I'm gonna throw in my link and I'm gonna hit save. 
And so what happens now is that that creates as a tab and we can see that we've got a browser inside Teams, which means that the students don't need to go out into the browser hunting for things. Um, it all happens inside Teams. So I can put those in and take those, um, sorry, put those in and take them away really easily just by clicking up here. And I can make it so the students aren't able to actually do that. The other thing that I might want to do is I might want to draw everyone's attention to our LMS, right? So it, your school may use something like Compass. So I'm going to grab that LMS link there, come back into the team. I'm going to put this in the general tab. Again, a website, and I'm going to say this is for grade six compass. So this is our LMS. I throw the link in there. Hit save. And so if you've got a, if you've got an LMS, whether that's compass or whether that's um, Schoolbox or, or another, as long as it's got a web portal, you can bring it in. Remember, anything that has a web portal can be brought in inside Teams very easily through that. So what you see there is you've seen the ability to have dedicated channels. OK, um, we have the ability to to um, throw in apps and files and all kinds of things um, inside there. Very, very, very cool. And remembering too that when we create a channel, that channel is automatically linked back to our class notebook into the collaboration space. So that means that students can come in to their um, to do their discussion area or their collaboration area, I should say. You can see here that uh, we've got maths, we've got literacy, and um, soon as as this starts to update, then the other channels will appear in there as well. But you can access it through there, or you can access it through the channel itself. All right, so very, very cool. How are we going for questions, Stephen? Is there any, any questions that I need to stop and answer? Oh, thanks, Troy. Yeah, I've been answering a, a, a few, and there's a few Victoria specific ones. Yep. Um, so are we able to make the calendar option available to us? OK, so what's happening at the moment is that um, the department have got their Exchange email servers um, not in Office 365. OK, so at the moment, the, the calendar um, app is not available to you because your email isn't connected using Edumail. But there's plans afoot to be migrating that email over into Office 365. So the, the answer to that is at the moment, no, but soon that'll be available to you. Thank you. Um, and is it possible to include colleagues from outside DET into a PLC or staff team? Um, definitely not. So at the moment, the, um, the department has actually um, locked that down, meaning that you can't access Teams, you can't even share files, um, etc. outside of the of the department. So if you're working you know, with the, the Catholic school down the road, they can invite you, but you can't yet invite them. Excellent. Thanks for clearing that up, Troy. Um, someone said that um, they've had students have deleted themselves and others from the team, but they're just a member. Is that should that be possible? No, that, that, that certainly shouldn't be possible. Um, they shouldn't be able to uh, remove themselves. So maybe um, if we can uh, if we can look into that and, and get back to you as exactly why that's happening, we'll, we'll yeah, see I'll, what we can do. Yeah, I'll share the um, Office 365 support link as well. Great. Um, and someone's asked, um, love the way this is being structured. Can you teach us how to make our lessons like this? <laughs> OK, just just watch this. <laughs> yeah. that's, what that's why we're here. Great. Thanks, Troy. Uh, thanks for the feedback. OK, so um, what I want to do now is I want to take you through and I want to show you a few more little features. So just give me a moment while I find my page where I was up to. Um, yeah, the next thing I want to talk to you about is assignments. So where assignments live is inside the general channel, the assignments dedicated to this um, team live here. The assignments right across all my teams live over here. All right, so if I click on assignments, You can see I've got one assignment that I've already created. Um, this is an Aboriginal culture assignment introducing Adam Goods, the, the footy player. Um, and if I click on that, I get to see what my students are doing. 
um, but I can also see how my students see it. All right, so if I click here on student view, this is the assignment that they have. OK, so that it's, it's got a title. It's been tagged as social studies. Um, there's some instructions that have been put in there. So they're to watch an Adam Goods video, um, summarize the major arguments in 150 words. Um, there's also a link which if they were to click on that, it would take them to uh, a series of Adam Goods um, activities and information. And then I've also created for them a, uh, a Word document that they can actually start to work on themselves. So each student will actually get that. So I've set the criteria by which they are to um, uh, submit that because I've already given, given them that template. But I want to show you how to create an assignment first before we start looking at um, how we might uh, market, etc. So when I create an assignment, I can create a quiz, OK, which is using Microsoft Forms. Again, we're going to have another little uh, workshop all about this, which we'll jump into later on um, and we'll go into more depth about around setting assignments. But just really quickly, I just want to show you that I can set an assignment here from inside Teams. I can set the title and again, I can set the categories. Um, I can create new categories. Um, I can set my instructions. I can add resources so I can add um, something from my own existing OneDrive. I can throw in links to the class notebook. I can throw in a link to anything. I can create um, a Word document, a PowerPoint document, or an Excel spreadsheet as a template for the students to work from. And I can even throw in coding assignments using Make Code, which is pretty exciting. Um, you can, <clears throat> excuse me, you can set the number of points. You can um, create a rubric as well. Um, I'll just show you really quickly. We won't actually create one, but it's really quite standard. You've got a title and a description, and then you can set your criteria. You can change these labels here. You can change the des descriptors as well. Very, very cool. You can also import an existing one if you've already got it saved as a, um, an Excel spreadsheet. Um, I can set the due date. I can decide who I'm going to assign this to. Do I want to assign this to all students or individual students if I'm differentiating? Um, as I said, I can set the time and the date, and then I can also just determine whether I want to allow late hand-ins or not. So even though I've set a date, I can I can do that in there. All right. So that's how we create uh, an assignment. But again, I'm going to take you. Um, into that in greater detail when we go into our assignments webinar um, in the next couple of weeks. All right, so now what I want to do though is I want to take you through setting up your own uh, live meeting, that is having um, video connections, audio connections to your students. So we're going to look at how we present the content to the students, we're going to record our session for later viewing, and we're going to manage our conversations and questions. Now, just a little um, hint for those of you that may be new to um, remote learning and distance learning, you're probably not going to want to run a 45 minute lesson where you're just talking at your students as if you're all in the same room. Um, we want to be looking at reducing our video content um, to short and sharp bursts, you know, around 10 minutes. We can break those up into a series of 10 minute um, uh, webinars and, and presentations, but really don't try to run, you know, um, six lessons, a 45 minute video. It's just not going to work for you. All right. OK, so looking at this, we can have 250 students at a time in the video together. So even though we've got 5000 students out there, we're still not able to bring them all into into the one video chat. But I think for most of you, 250 is going to be a very workable number. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I would run a, a meeting. So I'm going to come back into posts. Now, for most of our um, department people, because we don't have um, Office uh, our Exchange, excuse me, our emails in Office 365 online, Exchange online, instead, we're not able to run uh, to sorry, excuse me, to access the calendar app and schedule meetings from in there. Instead, what we do is we use the meet now button down here and we start our meeting. So you would have to somehow notify the students that the, the meeting is coming up um, and then they could come into the channel at that time and then you could start the meeting and that's fine. OK, but for uh, people in their own tenant, um, their own Office 365 tenant, maybe at a different school, you can actually schedule those meetings from inside here. 
So you would just click on the, the calendar and then you can schedule your meeting by clicking on this. All right. So I'm just going to show it to you as a, as a bit of a demo. So I might have um, maths. Integers. I hope I spelled integers right. Um, lesson. Um, let's say we're going to run that from uh, three o'clock today. It doesn't repeat. Do I want to uh, invite students? I can or I could throw it into a channel. All right, so we're in um, 2026T and I'm going to obviously put that in my, no we're not, we're in 2020. Yes we are, aren't we? Let's throw it into the mathematics channel. Oh sorry, 2026G, excuse me. Throw it into the, um, to the maths channel and then I would click send. And in a moment, that's going to appear in the maths channel. So if I come back to my team, come down to the maths channel, there we go, that lesson is ready to go. And so students can actually just click on that and jump into that lesson, all right? Or, as I said, um, if you are unable to access the calendar, instead what you do is you would just come into your channel, whatever that channel is. So let's go into science, for example, and you would just click meet now. OK, and then we would start our video. So you can see me there in um, my full work from home regalia. Um, and so if I had other students coming into this meeting, um, I would be able to to see them all across the screen. OK, so I can turn on my audio um, and my video, turn it on and off. I have the ability to share my screen. So if I've got content, PowerPoints, my um, my desktop, those kinds of things can all go in there as well. We've got a chat as well. So um, if I click on chat, I can actually be chatting with my students and my students can be chatting with me. Of course, they can unmute themselves and be talking back to me as well. The other thing that I can do is inside here, I can invite students that haven't maybe turned up for some reason. Um, I can also change their status. I can mute them and do other things like that. All right. So that's what happens in the in the video here. Now, the other thing that's really important to note is I can start recording. All right. So if I was to start that recording now, um, we get a, a notification. So we let everyone know that they're being recorded. Yes. And that meeting has actually now started to record. All right. So if I'm going to share my screen or anything that I'm going to do, it's all going to be happening in that space and that's going to be recorded. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, stop that recording. All right, the other thing I want to stress to you that's really important to know is here on these ellipses on the three dots, when you click show device settings, you actually get the ability to um, to change your audio and video settings inside here. So if you're having trouble, that's a really good place to, um, to visit. Okay, now I'm going to jump out of that meeting. How was the call quality? It was fantastic, thank you. I'm going to come back into my team. Coming back into my channel. OK, and so I'm in my site. I forgot what channel I was in then. Um, so in my science channel, you can see now that the recording has stopped and the and the recording is being saved to Microsoft Stream. All right, so what's happening now is that that video is um, being stored in Microsoft Stream, which is at an Office 365 app, OK? Um, but it's also having a direct link put here inside, and there it goes, it's ready to go. All right, so that means students can come back and access that video at any time. I can go into Stream and I can um, change my permissions, delete that, do other things that I want to do inside stream. But if I leave it there, my students know what's going on. So you can see that we've had a number of recordings um, in our in our channels um, and they're just going to be set, set there um, for kids that missed it um, or for students that um, maybe want to use it for review, etc. So that's how we run a video chat inside Teams. I might stop there and take and field any questions. How are we going, Stephen? Stephen, we got any questions? You're on mute, hi, mate. Hi, Troy. Um, yeah, they're coming thick and fast. Some that might be Vic specific. Can we disallow emojis? Um, yes, you can. So you can do that at a teacher level. Um, you can go into the settings inside your team settings and you can and you can disable those. 
Um, can we disable the meet now function for students? Um, so that's that's a department specific uh, question. I don't think that that has been disabled, but it's it's quite possible that it has. Let me find out and get an answer back to you on that one as to, to what the actual student view is like. Um, I think uh, I'm just coming down these. Um, da, 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 da. I think the others. Can we schedule a WebEx meeting and hold it inside Teams? Yep, so there is a WebEx app that you can access. So to find your um, WebEx app, you just click on the little plus up here, okay? And then you start searching for your app. So I'm up here and you can see there, there's the Cisco WebEx, WebEx meeting app. And so you can do that inside Teams, 100%. Excellent, thanks. I've just had a message from Jody at Microsoft as well that says um, some schools have already moved to Office 365, so they will be able to schedule meetings. Yeah, that's right. So, so if you've got excellent. your own tenant and you've got your own environment and not using the department's central environment, then you're in a different world for sure. Great. Um, the other one was about uh, add-ins for Office 365 apps. So someone wanted to use one of the science add-ins. Is that something that's a statewide setting? Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure what that question's asking, but our apps all live here. So we can search for them in here, but also remembering that if it has a, uh, a web portal, then you can add it as a website. Excellent. Um, well, there's a lot more that I haven't got to, so I'll let you carry on and we'll maybe come to them towards the end. OK, sounds good. Thanks. All right, so let's keep going then. Let's look at what we're doing after our lesson is finished. We've already started to touch on that a little bit, but we want to access the lesson recording, which we talked about a moment ago. Um, we want to be able to view the responses to the conversations and we want to continue to chat and collaborate. So I just want to stress some of the things about Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Stream. So there's an automatic app upload to the channel. Um, so it, it uploads into Stream and there's a link given into that um, that Teams channel, so you don't have to do anything there. Um, it does have automatic closed captions created in that video, um, and there's also a searchable transcript. Um, Microsoft Stream is free for education and it is definitely enabled in the department tenant, so you can access Stream today. You can hold up to 500,000 videos and the videos can be 50 gig each, which as you know, is a, um, a lot of space. The next thing I, I want to take you through is I want to take you through the gradebook. Um, so the gradebook tab lives at the top um, of our um, of our general channel. OK, um, when we click on grades, we see all our students down here and we also see all their assignments. OK, so it's going to let us know um, which students have handed them in the grades that we've given them. And I, again, I'm going to take in more detail later on in another webinar, but you're able to actually access the, the bird's eye view, and then you can also go into a student view where you can be looking at individual students as well. OK, so there's some really nice analytics data there that you can access. Um, but again, come back for our other workshop. Another thing I want to show you inside this team as well, um, I've got what's called the insights tab. Now, because this is a demo team, there's really very little um, insight that this is going to give us, but this is our analytics tool and this can be found inside our tabs. Um, you can see here, I've already loaded it in, but you would just type insights in here and then you can access it and it gives you some really good analytics data on what's going on inside your team. Um, so go in there and have a look and also keep an eye out. We've got some um, new features coming to this in the very near future. So keep an eye out for our announcements around that. All right. So moving forward, I want to talk about next steps and where you go from here. First thing I want to draw your attention to is our remote teaching and learning with Office 365 website aka.ms forward slash remote learning 365. So this is your one stop shop for everything Microsoft around remote learning. Um, any new uh, features announcements, 
uh, the latest, greatest stuff, support, everything is actually there for you. So please keep that, bookmark that and make that your one-stop shop. Um, second place I want, I say one-stop shop and then tell you about a second place. Second place I want to take you to though is the Vic DT Remote Learning Webinar Series, um, with which you are in the first, aka.ms forward slash Vic Events. Um, as I said today, we've gone on about Teams, but some of our um, other workshops, and let me just jump in and have a look for you. Some of our other workshops, you can see um, we've got remote learning virtual Q&A sessions, which you can jump in um, into those, ask your questions. We've got um, Microsoft Office 365 coming up on Monday. Um, it's 365 outside of Teams as well as inside of Teams. So doesn't matter whether your school's going Teams or not, this is still going to be relevant to you. We've also got a OneNote class notebook uh, webinar, outside teams and inside teams. Come along and be a part of that. We've got an authentic assessments using Microsoft Forms and also Teams. Um, come along to that one. We're going to show you some really good stuff that you can do for um, remote assessments. We've got an inclusive classroom webinar coming up on the 15th of April. This one is very dear to my heart, making sure that we are not leaving those kids behind that need that extra support, especially when they're in the remote environment. So come along. I will promise I will blow your mind with some of the stuff that you can do and some of the stuff that your kids are going to be able to do. And then, of course, we've got the last one, which is looking at teacher collaboration in teams. So using teams for teachers in their workflow and working together. Um, these ones are our um, hopeful ones that when we get back to face to face, um, we may not get there, but we've got them scheduled anyway. So these are our face to face uh, Minecraft webinars and also our um, inclusive classroom webinars. But again, that's found at aka.ms forward slash Vic events. Now, the other thing I want to draw your attention to is the online courses. So education.microsoft.com education.microsoft.com. These are a series of online, self-directed, self-paced um, workshops. We've got some wonderful materials on there. If you, When you come to that website, if you sign in, you can keep a record of everything that you've done. And all our courses, because they hit the ATSL standards, actually count as your VIT um, required PD. OK, so um, in fact, everywhere in Australia, except for New South Wales, these count as your PD. In New South Wales, they're teacher identified only, which is sort of like a tier two PD. But for everywhere else in Australia, these count as your PD. So go in there and have a bit of a play around with that. All right. Now, before we say goodbye and before we wrap, because we're coming up to our um, our two o'clock deadline, sorry, our three o'clock deadline. Um, again, I want to remind you, aka.ms forward slash Microsoft Remote Learning. Um, this is where you go for a lot of those materials. And also you can find me on social media. So there I am on Twitter. There I am on LinkedIn. You can search for me on LinkedIn and you can also search for me on Facebook. So um, Steve, I'm going to throw over to you and see if there's any more questions that we want to throw up. Oh, sorry, sorry, Troy. I'm just I'm just working through them. Um, perhaps you could hang around at the end and help me with some of them and we'll we'll leave them on the call. Yeah, sure. Oh, OK, so do, do you think we're going to do those by text or do you think it's better that we um, we just I just answer them as we go? Well, can you send out Have you got the emails of the people that? No, uh, no, we don't, we're not actually collecting them. So you know what I might do? So do you want me to just read them out to you? Yeah, yeah, maybe for the next seven minutes or, or okay. even more. We'll just yeah, we'll do it that way. Brilliant. Um, are you running any courses for Office Admin? Um, Specifically, no, but there are some great, not from us, but there are some great stuff. Uh, there is some great stuff available to you. Um, one of the websites is office.com forward slash training, office.com forward slash training, and you'll find some um, generic Office 365 trainings on there. Great. I've just put that in the um, in the uh, thing. Um, Q&A, yep. Yep, excellent. Um, Quite a few people have asked about stopping students from starting their own meetings. Yeah, so just keep keep uh, watch this space. Um, we are we've got some announcements coming soon about better management of the uh, feature announcements about better management of teams and of teams meetings. Um, so we have heard globally the cry of teachers saying we want some of these features. So um, what you're asking for is definitely in the pipeline and hopefully will come to us by the end of the month. Um, so yeah, just watch this space. Great, thanks. Um, are there space limitations on video in stream? 
Yep. So you can you you can upload. Um, what was it, Chris? Uh, Steve, it was five hundred thousand. I think it was. Let me go back to the slide. Let me take you back to this slide that we had on the. Just give me a moment. Sorry, guys. Yeah, so 500,000 videos and the videos can be 50 gig each. So good luck reaching that. That's pretty big. That is pretty big. Yeah. Um, so a couple of people have asked about how you're conducting this webinar and can um, Victorian schools do this as well? Yep, so this is called a, um, a live event, which means that you you can't activate your video. Um, it's just me speaking to you or, and, and Stephen as well. Um, and then you, you come in through a Q&A. So this is called a Teams live event. So go into your favorite search engine, um, type in uh, Teams live event and look for those um, instruction pages there. But I will just give you a little bit of a demo on what it looks like from, from here. So when you're inside a team, um, if you're um, shed, oh, I just realized, guys, apologies. You need to actually um, be able to access the calendar feature, which which some which most government teachers can't. But if you could, um, you would come in through the calendar app and you would schedule a live event through there. Great, thanks. Um, uh, quite a few people asking about can we turn off student cameras? Um, so you would need to, be, to, to disable uh, video for the students. You would need to um, get your school techie to be accessing the um, uh, the team's admin portal and looking through that or actually reaching out to the department to find out what the policy is going to be around that. At this stage, the department has not disabled student video, um, so meaning that it's there for you to use if you want. Great, thanks. Um... Uh, can students see all the other students' names in the chat? Yes, they can. It's it's transparent. If yeah. you want to have private chats, then you can go. Oh, I'm, I, I apologise. In the in the chat area, they can't see each other. In the posts area, they can. Okay, fantastic. Um, a couple of people have asked about. Um, uh, you can only see four people in a meeting. Is it possible to see more than four? OK, so at the moment, it's not that you can only see four. You can only see four at a time. Um, so the last four people to speak will actually come up on there and the rest will be um, uh, a small icons along the bottom. Um, that is a big ask that has actually been put to our team's development folks um, to, to expand that. And I know that that's something that they're working on. So again, I can't give you a, an ETA on when that feature will arrive, but watch this space. Great. There's been a few people asking um, that they'd like further information on how to actually run a live meeting like this one with Q&A. Yep, so again, um, we'll, we'll try and put a link in the chat there for you, but if you go into your favourite search engine and type in Teams Live Events, um, then you will certainly get a lot of um, documentation coming up. Brilliant. Um, da -da -da. Can relief teachers access this in Victoria? No, unfortunately, no. It's only um, teachers that are actually in a school and have a an edumail email address. Um, da -da -da. Someone's asking here, can I link Teams to an existing class notebook? Um, the answer to that is yes and no. Um, in the sense of no, it will not integrate in the way that I just demonstrated to you a moment ago. You will need to um, create the class notebook inside Teams when you create the class team and then drag all the content across. You can link to an existing class notebook, um, but the permissions, etc., would still have to be done through the app. Um, and just because a student is in the team doesn't mean that they're necessarily um, accessing the class notebook. I hope that makes sense. But the answer to that, again, is yes and no. You can link to it, but there's no integration. Thanks, Troy. So maybe just to finish, just tell people how they can get the recording and the um, slides as well. OK, sure. So um, what's happening is at the end of the, at the end of this webinar, um, you should be able to see the link to the recording. But what I will do is I will make sure that I house this somewhere where you can access this um, and I'll make sure what we're going to do is I think Eventbrite actually is recording uh, the email addresses. So maybe we'll uh, send out an email through Eventbrite um, and letting you know um, where the slides and where the recording is.
All right. Okay, guys, so that brings us right to um, right to three o'clock. I really appreciate everybody coming along and being a part of this today. Um, I hope you got a lot out of it. Please remember that this is not the end. This is actually a first of uh, numerous webinars. So feel free to go back to aka.ms forward slash Vic events and sign up for the other webinars that grab your fancy. Um, I've been Troy Waller from Microsoft and with me has been Stephen Payne also from Microsoft and we thank you very much for being a part of this today.